Hello everyone. I'd like to share with you the story of the Huya, an extinct New Zealand bird, and how I have represented it in my work. The Huya were last seen in 1907. Their demise was caused by many factors. Deforestation, the introduction of predatory species, human desire for Huya skins and feathers, and the Huya's unique instinctual behavior. When separated, the birds would call repeatedly for their mates, making them easy prey. No photographs of the bird exist, but as you can see from this watercolor by Johannes Kuhlmans, the male and female Huya have distinct beaks. Long for female, short for male. The male would hammer a hole in a tree trunk with his chisel-shaped bill, and then the female would use her long tweezer-like bill to reach the grub burrowed inside. The birds mated for life and always ate together. The Huya were sacred to the Maori, the indigenous people of New Zealand. Their feathers were worn by tribal leaders and stored in elaborately carved boxes called waka. The Huya also captured the fancy of Victorian England. During that era, it was popular to acquire taxidermied animals to decorate homes. Charmed by the Huya's distinct anatomy, Pairs of mounted specimen were in high demand, and the Huya were easy targets. As I mentioned, when one was captured, the other would call for its mate over and over. In 1901, the Duke of York traveled to New Zealand. Gifted a Huya feather, he added it to his hat band and started a trend. The cost of a Huya tail feather went from five shillings to a pound, and a new industry was born. A recent internet search listed a Huya tail feather at $10,000. And finally, jewelry made from Huya beaks became fashionable during this time. The Huya became a commodity. The demise of the Huya is a good story, isn't it? It has all the elements, conflict between good and evil and a strong moral component. I asked myself how I could translate this story into a contemporary visual statement. In 1998, I was invited to create a piece at the Henry Miller Library in Big Sur. Enamored with the story of the Huya and mindful of the site's purpose, I decided to create a book. To draw attention to the book, I rendered the birds in tempera paint on the library's wooden fence. The Huya slowly disappeared throughout the rainy season. Actually, I altered an existing book, New Zealand Birds and How to Identify Them, to include only the huya and to emphasize image over text. I glued pages together and erased all wording that did not reference the huya. Once I had created the structure for the book, I invited Henry Corning and Andre Singer Thompson to join me in drawing personal interpretations of the huya on the book pages. Next, I started recreating the huya from branches and wire. It seemed fitting to construct replicas of the birds from elements of their destroyed habitat. I was invited by Rene de Rosa of the de Rosa Center for Contemporary Art to make something for a show at the Atrium, a space at 600 Townsend Street in San Francisco. Once again responding to site, I created an installation about the Huya that spanned the interior and exterior spaces. Desk chairs facing the glass wall held Huya books. Painted images of the birds spanned the windows, and sticks and stone sculptures of the Huya lay outside. At the British Library in London, I discovered Life Song, a cassette tape of extinct and endangered bird song. On the tape, the sound of the Huya is recreated by British composer David Hindley. He based his bird call on a recording of Maori tracker Hanare Hamana whistling the specific calls of the male and female Huya. I contacted David and he was enthusiastic about creating a longer sound composition for a new version of the Huya book. On the right is a picture of the Huya specimen at the Natural History Museum in London. The birds are well represented in major natural history museums around the world. It seems that once extinction was inevitable, private and public collectors clamored to acquire a taxidermied version of the original. This is the subsequent version of the Huya book. I digitally reproduced the book pages and enlarged them to accommodate the size of the CD. 
so David's homage to the huya would fit in the back cover. Now the huya's unique haunting sound was combined with drawings and text to give a visual, auditory, and tactile representation of the bird. I was also able to add a colophon to the book where I referenced our dubious response to the dwindling huya population. I was pleased when the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco acquired huya last year. Using the whistled bird call recording, I made this animated short of the huya singing. The male bird calls with the following notes. uploaded the film to YouTube in 2015, where it has been viewed over 3,500 times. I received messages about the film from time to time, including a note from a New Zealand farmer who was sure he had seen Huya on his property and was using the recording to draw the bird out from the bush and confirm it still existed. I asked him to keep me posted, but I haven't heard back. I traveled to New Zealand and visited the Otari Wilton Bush, a native botanical garden. Local botanists there helped me collect branches from hinau trees, where the huya often made their nests. I sent a box of branches home, pleased to have actual native materials to create replicas of the huya. I often combine the hinau huya pieces with this James Braggy photograph, which clearly shows the effect of clear-cutting lumber practices in New Zealand. You'll note the landscape is almost entirely devoid of trees. Finally, the most recent iteration of the Huya story, which is a freestanding piece including many elements from previous work. On the floor is the Brage photograph of a clear-cut New Zealand landscape in the late 1800s. On top of the photograph is a tripod shape made from three salvaged 4x4s. The rectangular wood piece is 700-year-old Sitka spruce from Haiwa Gwai in northern British Columbia. It was given to me by a Canadian sawmill owner who impressed me with his respect for old growth and his commitment to sustainable forestry. Attached to the spruce are the reconfigured Hinau Huya. I remade them because I felt the earlier version lacked the harsh reality of habitat loss. I wanted the birds to look angry and frightened. Needing additional material, I used branches pruned from the New Zealand trees in the San Francisco Botanical Gardens. The recording of Henry Hamana's whistled bird call plays from a motion-activated audio player, and the Huya book is included on a nearby table. Thank you for your interest in the story of the Huya.